So there are two main methods to find the ionic charge for elements on the periodic table. First, you can memorize the simplified table shown below. So here, group 1 has a plus 1 charge and group 2 has a plus 2 charge. We skip the transition metals because they can have more than one ionic charge. Then you get to 3A, also called 13, that has a plus 3 charge. And then group 4A, also called 14, has a plus or minus 4 ionic charge. Once you reach that plus or minus 4, you start back down. You have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and you should end up with 0 for group 8A or 18. That's the noble gases, and they don't have any charge. It's actually a little bit more complicated than that, though, although in high school, that may be all you need. The table below provides a little bit more of a comprehensive picture. Note that it's mostly the same, but there are some exceptions. We have a few transition metals that only have one charge. For example, silver's a plus one, zinc and cadmium, they're plus two. And then we ignore a bunch of elements as well. It's actually easier to remember the ones that are there than to try to remember the ones that are missing. So in group 15, group 5A, you might just remember that nitrogen and phosphorus have a minus 3 charge. Or in group 16, 6A, you have oxygen, sulfur, and selenium with a minus 2 charge. You will refer back to these charges all the time in chemistry, so it's worth taking the time right now and making sure you've committed them to memory. This is Dr. B with some information about ionic charges on the periodic table. Thanks for watching.